Here I'm going to show you two very unrelated problems. So one is a bit of a number theory problem, the other one is an integral. So if you usually like to watch problems involving number theory, this is a chance to see an integral. And if you usually watch to, like to watch videos involving integrals, here's a nice number theory problem to think about. So maybe this could give you some motivation to expand your knowledge into one subject or the other. Okay, let's do this number theory problem first. So let's suppose we've got a two digit number. So I'm gonna write it as AB with a line over it. I think that's fairly standard notation for writing the digits of a number. And so in other words, that's 10A plus B. And we wanna also assume that B is not equal to zero. And I wanna point out here, then that means that A and B come from the set one up to nine. So built into this is that a is also not equal to zero because otherwise we would have a one digit number. So in other words, we've got a two digit number. Those two digits come from the set one to nine. And then we'll show that if this two digit number is divisible by A plus B, in other words, the sum of the digits, then it's in fact divisible by three. So this looks a little bit like the divisibility test for three, but not quite. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. Well, like I said, we are supposing that this number right here, 10a plus b is divisible by a plus b. So that means we can write a plus b divides 10a plus b. And then also very, very trivially, we know that a plus b divides itself. Okay. But if we've got a plus b dividing 10a plus b and a plus b dividing a plus b, then a plus b divides any combination of 10a plus b and a plus b. So most generally, that means that a plus b divides 10a plus b times x plus a plus b times y, and this is gonna be true for all integers x and y. So that's a standard divisibility rule. Now we just wanna choose x and y appropriately. So we'll choose x to be the number one, and we'll choose y to be the number negative one. Why would we wanna do that? Because that cancels out this b. I guess there's maybe another choice that you could think about, but I'll let you guys think about what another good choice for x and y would be. So that leads us to see that a plus b divides nine times a, because we've got 10 times a minus a, and then b minus b. And now from here, we're actually almost done. We wanna break this into two cases. So the first case is that a plus b divides three. In other words, we are already done. Okay, and then the next case, so I'll call that case two, is that a plus b does not divide three. Okay, but if a plus b does not divide three, then that means it also does not divide nine, but that means it divides a. So we have a plus b divides a. And now we can play the same game. So just also, we know that a plus b divides itself. So that means a plus b divides any linear combination of a and a plus b. So we could again take a difference here and see that that means that a plus b divides b. But that tells us that a plus b is less than or equal to b because divisibility implies that sort of inequality, especially if you're coming from this set of natural numbers, one through nine. Okay, but that means that a is less than or equal to zero. But notice that's impossible because we've assumed up here that a is between one and nine. So that leads us to a contradiction. So that means the only case that is possible is that a plus b divides three, which means we're done. Okay, now let's move on to this integral. So our goal is to find all pairs of real numbers, a and b. So these are obviously different than these natural numbers over here, a and b, where a is less than b, 
that makes the following integral, which is complicated, a maximum. So we've got the integral from a to b of e to the sine x cosine x times this polynomial 15 minus 2x minus x squared. So we want to maximize that integral. There's actually a hint built into the writing of this problem that there's probably a trick. And that hint is this function is either very, very difficult to integrate or impossible to integrate. And you can see that because you've got this crazy combination of exponentials and sines and cosines without anything to play off of outside of the integral. Okay, so let's maybe start with a couple of observations. So the first observation is that e to anything is always positive. Okay, another thing that we want to notice is that if we take this quadratic polynomial, which I'll call p of x, and we graph it, we'll see that it's a downward facing parabola. So it's a downward facing parabola because we've got a minus sign attached to the x squared. So that means it looks a little bit something like this. So what that means is that when we combine these two things together, our exponential and our downward facing parabola into a function f of x, the sine of this function f of x will be completely determined by the sine of this function p of x, where I'm saying s-i-g-n. So we could maybe make a little bit of a sketch for f of x like this. So this is not exactly what this thing looks like, but it's gonna have some sort of wiggling to it. Um, so it's gonna look something like that. So what values of a and b will maximize this integral? Well, let's keep in mind that the integral is the area under the curve. So maximizing the area under the curve would be picking endpoints. So we're only calculating the area above the x-axis and not the area below the x-axis. So that would be like this endpoint here and this endpoint here. But notice that these will be exactly the roots of our polynomial. So in summary, all we have to do is find the roots of our polynomial p of x, and those will give us the endpoints of our integration. Okay, so let's do that. We're gonna take 15 minus 2x minus x squared equals zero. Then we'll factor this. It's not too hard to factor this. It will factor as x, 5 plus x, and then 3 minus x equals 0. Let's just maybe go ahead and check that that works. We have 5 times negative x, x times 3. That'll obviously combine to negative 2x, so we're good to go. So that tells us our roots are negative 5 and positive 3. And again, by our previous discussion, those roots give us these values of a and b. So in the end, we have a equals negative 5 and b is equal to 3. So that's going to maximize the value of this integral. And those are the only two numbers that will maximize the value of this integral because those are the only two roots of this polynomial. Notice we didn't get anywhere close to calculating the actual value of the integral. We just found a place where it is maximum. And that's a good place to stop.